hello friends welcome back to my channel and uh, today we are back with an exciting tutorial on git so this is the continuation of our previous tutorial on git so in this tutorial for uh, git tutorial for beginners we are going to see the most used commands in git so this will be very useful tutorial because you need to know all these commands which we are going to learn from this so as a you know, user of git you should have to regularly use these commands to pull uh, your code from repository to push it to add it to your you know staging area you to commit so all those things you'll have to do it so before i start with the commands let me give you a you know uh, architecture or diagram how we you know usually will have the git repository right so this we have discussed in our one of previous tutorial so to just to give you a reco recap so you know like you have githubs or gitlab which we call it as remote repository right and on the machine you have something called local repository and you also have a you know staging area and working directory right so what we'll do is you we usually create a git repository on your local machine right so and from there you create make some changes and you will add those changes into the staging area and you commit those changes to the local repository then you push it to the remote repository which would be github or gitlab right or, or or the other way like you usually you know clone the branches or feature branches from the remote repository you make the changes and you do the same procedure right so that's how we usually do it so we will see you know to each these steps what commands we use it in this uh, tutorial so before i get into this actual process uh, if you are new to my channel or if you haven't subscribed to my channel i would uh, request you to click on the subscribe button and also like my videos share and comment so to just give uh, a glimpse of uh, common git commands which we are going to use so we may will be using uh, sim all these commands and also maybe some other commands as well uh, these are some of the you know uh, commands which is really important like how to set up your git configurations of your username and user you know email address and uh, you know how to initiate a git, a git repository how to clone from a repository how to find the status and also you know how you can add those uh, files into the staging area and what is the difference you can find and how to commit uh, you know into local repository how you need to, how to find some logs how to push it you know so there's a syntax and everything we will see it in the actual demo now i'm using uh, git bash here so if you are you know not having git bash installed on your machine please check my previous tutorial which i will link it to the video description how to set up git right so we are inside the folder see git uh, projects so what i want to do is i want to create a git repository right so one option is you can create a folder and then you can initiate uh, that repository using git in it so uh, for example you know this uh, uh, folder you don't have anything so let me create a folder called the uh, test project okay so we have a project now so if i go here and uh, you can see one project so i will go to test project now so we are inside the project now what you can do is you can do git in it so you it will convert uh, that uh, repository as a git repository right so if you go here you'll have a dot git folder which we already discussed what the contents of the git folder and what each uh, components does right so that's the one way to do it so i'll just delete this folder okay so i will delete it so now if i see you don't have anything over here so you let me just come out of it and you can see there is nothing so now what i want to do is there is another way to create a git repository as well so now you can see like we are inside c git project right so what you can do is you can use git in it and you can define the project name itself for example test project so if you do that it will automatically create a folder also in this location so Previously what we did is we created the folder and then we go inside that and we initiated that as a git repo right. So now the, you can also do it in this way like you can use git init and give the project name so it will create a default uh, project. So let me delete this again okay and uh, what I want to do is uh, uh, I want to also show you like uh, how we can clone a project because it's not uh, always that you know we create a project here we usually go to you know git uh, hub and you use that uh, clone that project here 
So in GitHub, you know, you can create a repository. You can just click on new and it will ask you to create repository. So you can give a name like test project. Okay. And uh, you can select whether it's a public or private. You can also give some description here to give a description for the project. So public means it's open to all private means and then you will have to access only with your uh, user account and password. So it's not uh, available for others. Okay. So what we can do is, you know, you can uh, uh, click on create repository here. And, uh, you know, if you want to add a readme file, you can use that as well. Uh, if you click on uh, create repository without adding any of this, you will, uh, you know, get uh, some instructions here itself, like how to create a new, a new repository on command line, uh, what we are using about, you know, um, git init. And also, we are also talking about how to pushing into a, a remote repository, right? So uh, what uh, we can do is if you want to clone uh, you know, uh, this project, what you have to do is you have to uh, use this link and you have to come here and you have to use git clone and you need to give this uh, link. So now you can see it says uh, cloning, okay, but uh, you can see it's appeared to have cloned an empty repository. So what you can do is it's uh, it's cloned the project, but it's an empty repository, right? So uh, so that, that's also another way like you can clone the project. So if it's not an empty repository, you should have uh, other contents as well, which was there in the uh, you know, repository, right? So let me go inside and uh, also, you know, uh, let me go inside uh, the test project. So now you can see we don't have anything. But if you see, once you go inside the project, you can see uh, the naming convention. You can see there is a bracket called master. Right, so that means you are in the master branch or main branch. Now, what we need to do is uh, we need to see what are the other options we have it, right? So usually, you know, uh, if you are uh, working on this repository for the first time, it will also ask you to do some uh, configuration or, you know, that usually will ask you at the time of uh, pushing this repository in the remote repository. So in that case, you know, if you, before itself, you can configure your email address and the username using uh, this command using git config. So what you can do is you can use this command git config uh, global dot username and you can give the name here for the adding username. Similar way, we can also add it for uh, the user email. So the only difference is you can change it with the user email and you have to give the uh, email address which you are cloning from the project or the uh, email address which you have access to this uh, project so that will be used to authenticate or not to push it to the um, you know git repository okay so that's one thing which you uh, have to see but usually you know when you push uh, to the repository it will automatically automatically ask you to enter your email address and authenticate so you can do that in that way as well or you can use git config and you can do that so in order to also uh, know the status of the git uh, branch, so you can see now there is nothing, right? nothing to commit, right? So uh, because this is a blank repository. So now let me do one thing. Let me create a file over here. So let me create a file and I will call this uh, test.txt, right? And it's a blank uh, text file. But if you go now here and if I stay git status, you will see like there is an untracked file that means this uh, test.txt is in the working directory so this is not in the staging area not or uh, it's committed into the locket repository so this is an untracked file now we need to add this file to the staging area and also we need to commit uh, to the local repository then you have to push it to the remote repository so how to add a, a file to you know, uh, staging area? It's already uh, written here itself, like git add the file name, right? So what you can do is you can uh, do uh, git add and text test.txt. So this will do the add. Now if you use git status, you can see there is uh, you no, know, uh, nothing is untracked, but it says, you know, you, there is uh, uh, changes to be committed. So this uh, new file text.txt can be uh, you know, committed to the uh, local repository. Now there is also another way uh, to do it. You don't uh, you don't have to write down always this git add test dot text. For example, I will make a change uh, for uh, you know this file again. Let me save this. If I go back and uh, use git status, you may see you know 
again this file is modified right which is an untracked so what I have I can do is you, you know if there are multiple files like this you can just use git add and the dot so that means everything uh, inside this folder will be added uh, into the staging area so now if I use git status you will see uh, the untracked file is gone now we have something called the uh, you know which need to be committed so let me clear out so now we are done with this uh, moving the file into the staging area now we can commit that into the uh, local repository so before that there is also a good command which is called git diff and if you use test dot text it uh, let me check so if I edit this file I just made some changes into this file okay so if I save this and if I go back and if I use uh, git diff and the uh, file name it will tell you what the changes we have done so for example you know um, what was the previous uh, file uh, content and now uh, how it is so uh, you know the the benefit of this command is you can see what is the difference because this is now a unstaged file and you know what is the this one is already uh, you know a staged file right so now this is the difference between that so this will also help you to understand what is the changes has happened on that file so let me use git add again so it's all done now how to commit this into local uh, repository you can use git commit and hyphen m and you can give a commit message so i'll put uh, first commit okay so you can see um, all the files which were in the staging area are moved into a commit so local repository so now if i use git status you can see there is nothing to commit and uh, it's tree is clean so there is nothing in the staging area nor in the you know a working uh, working directory which uh, need to be pushed into the local repository you can also use a command called git log this will give you you know some of the information like uh, what we did so you can see we already did the first commit right so that details is shown up here so uh, that's also a good uh, you know command which you can use to do some analysis so i just want to show you about that now the uh, next option is like we are uh, moved all these changes into the, our uh, uh, you know, um, local repository. Now we need to push that into the remote repository. So before you know we do that, we can check what what are the remote repository which is uh, connected to this machine. For that, what you can do is you can use git remote hyphen v. So now we can see uh, we are already uh, connected into this uh, repository, git remote test project, right? Because we clone this. In case if you are you know don't have that repository you know mapped, what you can do is you can use git re uh, no remote. So you can use git remote add origin, and you need to give the um, uh, path. So this will be the path. So you can go to the your repository and you can get that link, and you can uh, paste that. So uh, this will add that repository to this uh, you know, local repository. So you should be able to, you know, uh, push these images, uh, push these changes into the remote repository. Now, since we already have it, it says, you know, the remote origin already exists. So, but in case if you don't have it, you, you know, if you don't uh, remote, uh, you cannot push it to the remote uh, repository. So you'll have to add the remote repository. Okay. Now we want to push whatever we made the changes into the uh, remote repository, right? So what for, for that we have to use git push and uh, hyphen u and it should be origin and uh, the remote, uh, you know, it should be origin and also the branch. So since we are using the main branch or a master branch, you can use main or master. So if you use this, let me just check it. So you can see I just used the uh, git uh, hyphen u origin master okay because I think here it should be master not main so but some uh, of the you know git repository I've seen like we have to use uh, main okay so let me clear out and uh, if I go back to uh, our repo and if I just refresh it you can see the text file is over here right so whatever we have put it uh, is shown here so that's a, a pretty simple process right so but uh, you need to know all these commands because we you should have a clear picture of what is a working directory what is a staging area what is a local repository what is a remote uh, repository so 
you should have a clear picture so that you know you can use git uh, you know commands to do all these changes so you can use git add you know git uh, commit git push right so git remote add for adding the remote repository so all these commands you should have a uh, always in your mind because you cannot always depend on some other tools like eclipse or something to do all these uh, commands because you can integrate Eclipse or other tools so that you don't have to do these commands but always you should have these commands in mind so that you know you can do all these checks by this command line itself now what we have seen is like how to push the changes from the local machine to the git remote repository right now for example uh, you know I have this file and I'm going to make some changes into this file okay so this is uh, now I'm going to put um, 1 2 3 4 5 6 as well I'm going to commit the change here so what does it mean like you know some other developer or someone has to make the changes into your uh, project so oh, now what you have it in your local machine is different what you have it in the uh, remote repository right so in this case what you can do is if uh, I go to this uh, location you can see the file is uh, still like this right so what I can do is I can use this command git pull and I will give the repository name so if we run this, you can see it has uh, you know, uh, pulled that uh, you know, changes what has been happened and you can see that one file has been changed. Now if I open this file, you can see it is taken you know, the latest uh, version from the remote uh, repository. So this is also the way, you know, because whenever somebody else makes some changes, if you have to pull that into your local machine, you use the git pull command and you can make the changes and you can push. But usually, you know, we don't do it into the master branch. Usually every person will have their own, you know, feature branches. So we'll see more about branching, merging, you know, conflict, uh, all those things in the upcoming tutorial. But I just wanted to show you the basics commands which we are doing now. So I think this will be uh, really helpful because you need to know all these commands if you are working on Git. Okay, great. So that is all uh, for this tutorial. I hope uh, it's an informative tutorial for you and I would request you to subscribe uh, for more videos so that you can uh, get notified about my new videos and I want to thank you for watching.